Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits and this is part 16 of our Unity tutorial series on making a point-and-click adventure game. In this video, we're going to start looking at switches, our third type of interactable that lets us affect other things inside of our game world. So up to this point, uh, everything that we've been made has worked somewhat independently. Um, we have connections between our nodes, but any given node could really exist and function without another node to connect to. Um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to create nodes that will rely on other nodes in some way, whether it's their accessibility or what they look like or what they do in our game. So because we're going to have this new kind of connection between nodes, we need to do a little bit of planning. It's easy to get bogged down in something like this and just start writing custom codes and different scripts for every, you know, every interactable we encounter like this. But we can actually avoid this by um, kind of taking a, taking a step back, looking at what all of our switches have in common, or at least what most of them have in common, kind of planning from there. So this video is going to be a little bit less about coding and less about diving into the Unity editor, and more about really looking at what these switches are and how we can um, most efficiently make them. So the first thing to understand about these switches and about our game as a whole is there's two concepts we want to look at called states and prerequisites. The state is the condition of any object in our game. Oftentimes this is just going to be a yes or no question, um, so it's going to be handled by a boolean. Um, for example, actually, our image viewers and our observers are technically these have two states. They are either being looked at or they're not being looked at. They're not really um, interactive. We can't really affect them, though, because whenever we leave one, we are inherently not looking at it anymore. What we're really looking at here now is things that we can go to, change, and then leave in that changed state. So common, common um, types of these might be things like open and shut or on and off. Like I say, you know, oftentimes it's a Boolean. In some cases, it might have multiple states, like if you have um, you know, different channels or different levels of volume or brightness, things like that that might have more than just the two. But in you know, probably 90% of cases for these sorts of switches, it's going to be a yes-no situation. The second type of um, the concept I wanted to get across was prerequisites. And these are a kind of a requirement check. They're a, um, an if check will do if there is a requirement before we can change a state. And so this is typically going to be checking a state somewhere else, but it isn't always. Um, an example of uh, checking something else is say that you have like a, a light switch in your game. And when you go to click it to change it, it's going to have to check first um, if there's a generator elsewhere in your game, if that's turned on. So it's gonna check that state and say, if the generator state is on, then we can proceed. And likewise, once it is switched, then it might go to another node elsewhere that's a light bulb and turn that on for you. So it's very, you know, like I say, it's very external. It's really affecting things outside of just the one node that we're in. Um, there are situations where it might be the same node. For example, if you have a box, it might check, there might be a lock state on that box. And if it's unlocked, then it can open. Um, so there's also internal situations with prerequisites, but the, you could have either. And what's really important to realize about this is that prerequisites really hinge on those states because whether or not a state is met determines if the prerequisite is met. So knowing that this all revolves around states, there are three kinds of common states that we're going to find with most of our, um, most of our switches. The first kind is called access. And access really just means can we get to a node? Um, there might be, it might be the case that there isn't an active node component on it or that the collider isn't active or we might even just not add that link where we have our reachable nodes. So say we're in room A and there's a node in room B and the most obvious example for this is that there's a closed door in between us. If that door is closed then for some reason we cannot click to room B and so that's, that's this access state. Once that state changes, once the door is open, then we would make that link happen, whether we're doing it through reachable nodes or through our components or colliders. Um, the second uh, common state is activation. In this case, we can get to a node, but either when we try to interact with it, it doesn't do anything, or it might react to, our, um, to what we're doing, for example, flipping that light switch, but nothing might happen if the other um, prerequisites aren't met. So in this case, it's really, um, the light switch actually is probably the best example of this where you're 
you know, you can turn the light switch up or down based, you know, as you hit it, but if that generator isn't on, then it's not going to turn on that light. So once that generator is on, though, then that activation state is um, considered true, and so now it's going to actually have its effect on the game world. The last type of state is the mode state, and this is where you can interact with something, but it's not interacting in the way you would expect it to or the way you want it to. Um, for this picture, a radio that has one dial on it, and that's the dial you're going to use both to change the frequency and the volume. And there's a switch next to it too, and the switch determines which you're changing. So you can turn that knob or that dial, but it might not be changing what you want it to until the mode is in the right state that you want it to be in. So that's the, that's the final type. There's access, activation, and mode. So with these states, we now need a way to keep track of them. And we have two options for this. First thing we can do is we could use a game manager. The other option is to use a component-based tracking system. Um, the game manager would basically be we would create one you know, overarching script probably be a um, have a static instance of itself so we can you know call it from anywhere and that's going to have either you know a list or an array or probably a dictionary actually so that we can have some um, name for each state and that's going to track all of our states so we would just have this long long list of states you know the the north door is in this state the south door is in this state the light switch is in this state the generators in this state so on and so forth um, there are some pros to this for sure um, everything would be very easy for us to find because we always know we can just go to the game manager or state manager or whatever we're going to call it and just you know search through the list for whichever particular state we're finding. It's also relatively easy to save something like this because we have all of our states in one place like that. We can just, um, when we want to save our game, just make an array um, and serialize it, which is a whole other uh, conversation. But suffice to say, because everything's in one place, it makes that a lot easier to do. However, there are also some cons to this manager system. Um, one of the cons is that all of the states are really detached from their objects. They're in this one place, and so then they would need to call to those objects, but it's, it's definitely um, a little bit um, not as common, common sensible as you would think it would be. Um, the second thing is we need to be really careful with how we're labeling things, because chances are you would use something like a string in a dictionary as a key, and that would get you the state you're looking for. But you just need to make sure that, you know, you might have in two separate rooms, you might have a north door in each, but you don't want to call them both the same thing because that's going to cause you problems with your dictionary and with your indexing. So um, things like that we'd have to be very careful with as well. And then finally, it adds some dependence because now all of a sudden our entire game is really hinging on this one script, which isn't bad because it's just one script, but at the same time, if something goes wrong with it, now we've kind of lost all of our connections and that we can't, um, it's going to be really difficult to get back from that. So what is our alternative? Well, the alternative is to use a component-based system. And how we would do this is we would create um, a couple of C-sharp scripts, one which would create a state component, and we can attach that to any node that we choose, as well as a prerequisite component as a second script. And that would, uh, again, be something that we could just add to any object that needs it. So for example, in the case of the light switch, we would add the state of the light switch, as well as the um, prerequisite that the generator must be on. Um, the, one of the biggest pros of this is that every all of our states are very tied to the object that they affect. Um, so that light switch has those two components on it. You never really have to wonder, oh, what is this, what is this particular state connecting to? Because you're always right where you need to be. Um, the other good thing about this is it makes use of Unity's um, capabilities. You know, when we're looking to see if something has a state or a prerequisite, we can very easily use get component and things like that. It's very, you know, Unity is built to add components to objects, and so that's really taking advantage of that idea. Um, one of the cons of this is it is a little bit more difficult to do the kind of saving the game that we just talked about in the game manager. Because everything is in different places, we would then need some sort of way of telling all of these objects to tell their state to some sort of an array, put them in the proper order, and then pass them back out again when we start the game again. So that is a little bit of a um, gotcha we'll have to be careful for. In addition, this requires a little bit more of wiring different components together. For example, if we want um, if we want the generator to be tied to the light switch, 
um, we're going to have to do that for everything, which is okay because this is really more of a level design um, exercise versus something where we're trying to procedurally do everything. Um, so with all that said, I think we are going to go with this component route. Um, in order to keep things kind of independent and keep um, all of our information with the objects we want it with, and it's going to be very, because everything's more modular, it's going to be much less likely that everything will break if something goes wrong. If something goes wrong in one particular object, we're probably going to be okay elsewhere in our game. Um, and we'll certainly address the idea of serial, serializing these states and saving um, your game, but we'll look at that toward the end of the series. Right now, we're just going to make sure that we get our switches working properly um, and having the right effects and the right prerequisites um, in our game itself. So next time we're going to actually get started into the coding and um, developing this portion of our game. Uh, we'll create a basic state that we can work with and set up our first Switch interactable in our game world. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.